Hi there, uh, Richard Little from Your Land Partner joining you once again. Um, we are currently on a 54, I think, 54 out of 100 videos and in the midst of a uh, sort of 10, 12 video, it gets longer every day, um, a series on planning and all aspects of planning. Um, so we're touching, sort of touching base with, with a lot of the, the, the different parts of the planning process. And, and, and today we're going to be talking about the, the key players, you know, who are the key people in, in the planning process. So um, we, we don't always like to refer to sides, but basically in the planning process, there's two sides. There's our side and the other side. Uh, and so in, in, in this particular case, with a, with a developer's hat on, um, our side is ourself um, as the lead developer. Uh, it might be ourself or a business, uh, you know, business partners whatever that are leading this um, and the key team really are going to consist of a uh, planning consultant or planning consultants depending on the type um, and, and size of a project and also location sometimes uh, won't get into why we sometimes use two until we do uh, a video or two on planning strategy so um, if you don't watch the others you probably want to watch that one that's where some of the clever stuff uh, um, well what other people might consider to be clever stuff what we consider to be bread and butter stuff happens um, so just sort of in terms of, of planning consultants um, those of you that, that, that know us and watched a few videos and, and talked about we, we're a great believer in planning consultants we're a great believer in consultants as long as they're good ones um, unfortunately uh, like in any any sector I suppose uh, in in my quite cynical view uh, majority of consultants are, are okay uh, and then there's some that are absolutely atrocious and then there's some that are really good and obviously what we want is the really good ones now as with many many things uh, there used to be an old adage that I think my dad and, and grandparents used to sort of say you get what you pay for don't work like that anymore and I'm sure you know, lots of you will have all sorts of things that you can think of or actually no you don't get what you pay for yeah you, sometimes you do but sometimes I'm afraid you don't so it's not about having the most expensive people um, it's a case of having people that are providing you with the value so the cost um, is is a it's a good investment it's actually they are bringing you strength to your team they are bringing you what you need perhaps the gaps that you haven't got so in this case of planning consultants it's the planning expertise um, like with any type of consultant um, uh, there isn't any one person that knows everything about every aspect um, and planning consultant is consultancy is no different to that um, you you have uh, different different strengths different sizes of project we've got planning consultants that may know the system in theory but a lot of their work uh, may be at the real big end of stuff they they, they do you know the the massive map applic uh, applications commercial stuff and, and and things you know and big projects and and things like that when then you've got others that work on perhaps residential stuff uh, smaller projects and people that do things like hmos and things like that so it's having somebody that's got relevant experience in the type and size of project i will say right now that location in our view it doesn't, they don't have to be local. Um, so I'll give you two scenarios, one for and one against. Um, so planning consultants, and the same with any other consultant to be fair, um, is, is when they only work in a certain area, they can get quite uh, pally, or at least they get to know um, perhaps the, the planning department, the planning officers, uh, and the people that are going to deal with sometimes councillors and everything else. And, and, and I think there is a mistaken belief, largely, that that's a benefit. So from our own experience, we say it isn't. Um, and numbers of reasons for that is is they might get to know people. That doesn't mean to say that they are either admired, respected, liked or whatever by the people that, that you're asking them to work alongside or against depending on how you look at it um so you know geography isn't you know isn't isn't always the, the right thing to to select somebody on i'd much rather have somebody that really knows um the right strategies that we're we're we're, we're the planning plays that we're putting into place to have um uh, than, than than somebody that's local 
Um, um, but that said, some local consultants can be great because, you know, they do know some people, they can open some doors, they can introduce you, etc. So it's very much uh, dependent on who they are and what it is you want from them and, and, and what you're actually, you know, what you're looking to achieve. So, you know, there is no, yeah, it's no simple black, white, sort of, yeah, that's the right thing to do, that's the wrong thing to do. Um, what I will say is, is uh, the one thing to beware of in terms of, of planning consultants is those that say, um, you know, they don't get their, their, they've never, never had, a, never had a refusal. You know, walk away very, very quickly because um, we're we, we're expecting our planning consultants to push perhaps the boundaries a little bit sometimes and and, and be a little bit pushy in what we're what we're actually trying to get through. Um, and invariably, if 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 they're actually um, pushing things a little bit, they will get refusals. The system, you know, should always they should always have some refusal somewhere on their on their on their sheet, if you like, on their portfolio of of, of, of um, projects and things. So. Um, so yeah, so beware of, of 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 any any consultant, not just planning consultants that uh, you know are looking for a, a perfect record, and also those ones as, as I've suggested before that say, oh, they really know the people at the council. They really might, but that really doesn't carry a great deal of weight. It's over. Uh, I think it's over exaggerated in in how important that is. Uh, we'll be talking about relationships, you know, again, another video. Um, so moving that forward in, in, in terms of, you know, it's not it's not just how we do it, it's how most do it. So, you know, one of the other key players from our side on our team is 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 architect. You know, who's doing the design, so the design element. We always split that up. Planning consultant architect, you know, planning consultancy architects teams. There are quite a few practices now that, that, that have uh, multi disciplines in. Um, including, you know, planning consultancy and architecture, uh, and and there are some architects that actually got quite adept at planning over the years. So, you know, my general rule is planning is for planning consultants, design is for architects, and we know a lot, quite a lot of architects that don't necessarily agree with that. But a lot of what we would call the new wave of architects. And some of the more forward thinking, creative thinking architects, not design wise, but business wise, uh, take a, a much different stance now and, and, and they will prefer to work on the design. They may well have had training in all sorts of things like project management, but we don't use them for that either. But anyway, it's not about bashing architects. They're key people on our team, uh, certainly for the planning process and the design stage, because, you know, that's generally what they're pretty damn good at. You know, um, so alongside of them and to back lens up, back up the planning consultants and the architects is is a, a whole raft of consultants that you may need. You know, all the way from ecology to highways to to cost consultants. Um, you know, all sorts of surveys. You know, bat surveys and tree surveys and and uh, drain surveys and and you know, there's they're, just yeah, you know, literally dozens. Yeah. Um, so you need to be guided largely by the planning consultants and, and the architects as to what information it is much better to have, you know, as you enter the planning process. And this will depend on what you're looking for uh, and, and, and how you how you strategize in your planning. So we'll, again, we'll come back to that. Um, so on the other side of the fence, the other side of the table, the opposition, the other team, whatever you want to call it, is effectively the council and. So what we've got and, and some of you I'm sure will be aware of some of these and, and, and maybe not some of the others so um so planning officers so the planning officers at the local council the local authority that you are dealing with you know they will be processing um your application uh, and, and you'll often just have the one you know a designated officer and they'll be in charge of your your um, application and the process all the way through doesn't always happen like that but that's generally the way uh, planning officers like anything else are have got different levels you know they all tend to be senior planning officers now in many cases but you know there's there's generally two or three levels um and they will be given um projects not just on the location and the size um, but actually sometimes who's putting them in um but you know again we'll, we'll talk about that uh, another day now planning officers um uh, what should we say the smart experienced planning officers um you know are largely pretty damn good are they overworked? Well, in, in the outside commercial world, we would all probably say they're not as overworked as they suggest they are. But to be fair, um, I would say 
by and large they are um so one of the things that we actually do and i'll just touch on it now we'll go into much more detail on another occasion is we we try and do a lot of their work for them okay um because we appreciate our hard work in the are, but that's not really what it's about if we do as much of the work as we can for them then that tends to go in our favor a little bit the one thing you will not do is you will not become friends with the planning officer the the, the very best situation you can have is a mutual respect okay um so when you have dealings with the planning planning officers and the planning department um do not be afraid to push them do not be afraid to be sharp with them do not be afraid to get a bit cross um because again the old hands the old heads amongst them will not then um give you a problem later on they will not sort of remember it and sort of say they will if you're unreasonable they will if you're rude they will if you are just obnoxious and believe me on our side of the table there's a lot that that goes on yeah um so if you are being professional say you can be a bit emotional that's not a major problem just don't get too personal um most planning officers i would say are decent like i said with professions they're mostly okay some very good and yeah there are some absolutely atrocious planning officers in the wrong job but we can say that about everything this is atrocious developers so you know you're not going to make friends with them you don't want to make enemies of them either there is no need to do that if you are professional what you want to do and particularly if you're going to be going back and time and time again in the same area is you want them to actually think well of you in terms of okay we don't always agree but largely they're fair they're professional and they are just doing their job they're doing their job we're doing our job um so uh, we have two types of planning officers so we have basically planning policy and development control so most of what we deal with is at the development control end but actually on bigger schemes uh, and when we're doing things like promotion land promotion etc we we do till, deal quite a bit with planning policy so planning policy is you know the the, the, the airy fairy stuff up here about or oh, what we can do what we can't do etc and development control is exactly what it is there's an application right now we're going to decide it and 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 believe it or not they don't always get on in even in the same planning departments um so again stories perhaps for uh, perhaps we'll do some videos just with stories um so then mo moving up if you like as, as as your planning application progresses through um then you know the other key players are um you know the 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 local council if you like the the parish or the ward you know council so you know that little group of people that sit over you know a community you know so i, I guess most of you know what i'm talking about um now how influential are they uh, they can be they're generally not as influential as they like to think they are there's some very very well-meaning people that sit on on parish councils ward councils etc they really are um and 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 i'll say the same thing in fact i'll bring this in at this point is planning committees so that's just the next level up it's the councillors that actually will sit on a planning committee and i'm going to group them together in so much as again you know some very decent people some very well-meaning people on there and some complete complete pain in the arses so excuse my french or, or anglo-saxon or whatever you want to call the language um, but unbelievable in terms of the disruption they bring to the planning system uh, and their sheer you know naivety their, their innocence their lack of knowledge etc it will the, the stories that you can tell and hear about that is 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 amazing um but that's the system so we we are dealing the key they are key people in the process so we shouldn't ignore them would you like to absolutely but the one thing that you've got in common between the planning committee and the the local the parish council ward councils is that they may consist of you know anywhere from six to 16 or whatever you know a people officers uh, sorry uh, uh, councillors um however generally most of those things have one leader possibly in the ranks one challenger somewhere along the lines um and they'll have a couple of influential people so even in the biggest committees we never see more than three or four that actually are that influential 
So it doesn't mean to say they're wrong with the others, you know, but actually the people that drive the decisions forward, the people. So the leaders, you've got the leaders and the lambs. Um, and, and probably not, but not not a very um, perhaps a, a, a very kind way to describe them. But that's how they are, and that's how how we see them. Um, so, is it important to actually get these guys on board? Ab sometimes, oh, absolutely. We'll talk about lobbying when we talk about strategies. As they, or, you know, when we're talking about planning, and, and say we do two, three videos purely on stories um, some good some bad but the 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 amount of the stuff that we can do and strategize in and when we start talking about um how we profile all committees and 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 and, and, and all that and there are you know really valid reasons that we do that but um there are key people there so you know and they can be fairly influential for you and against you we generally don't mind whether they're for us against us as long as we know because we, we, we tend to know how to deal with them. Sometimes it's easier to deal with somebody that you know is against you than somebody that you think is for you. And you're going to get a lot of this. And I believe in me, a lot of this, if you do lots of applications over the years, you will see lots of people saying one thing and you find out that actually... That's not quite what they're, they're saying something to you, but they're saying something else to everybody else. And I think it's quite, it, it, there's, there's quite a lot of commonality, shall we say, between, you know, people that are local councillors, because for some of them, some of them are bolshy so-and-sos and they just say whatever they want and, and, and that's okay. The others, they want to be everything to everybody. They're the worst ones, but they generally are the followers. They just think they're the leaders sometimes. Anyway, I'm not going to go into too much of a rant on it. There really are some great people. You know, it's a job that needs doing. Uh, in, in my own world, in my utopia world, it wouldn't need doing. But anyway, it does need doing in the real world. Um, so if we take that forward, the other key people are local residents. Now, whatever I've just said about about the councillors, the committees, etc., you can multiply that by ten times. Ten times, you know, as awkward and as difficult and unreasonable as the councillors, um, and, and sometimes got ten times more sway, because it depends who they know and who they are. Yeah, so never underestimate your local residents. If you can get them on side, that's fantastic. But you will find that even more so than I said with the councillors, they'll say one thing to you and something to somebody else. But what they actually say to you might be the truth. Sometimes they're actually saying whatever it is to the other people just because they need to be saying. So we've had um, we've had um, uh, local residents meetings, which we'll, we'll often hold and when we've got a plan application going in uh, and we expect there we, we expect that the, the people that come to that they generally come to, to to protest people that support you tend to stay at home they're not really gonna and they don't even if they support you they don't want to always be seen to be supporting you so we've had we had one uh, we had two on this particular project uh, it's probably about three years or so ago now um and and we won't go into the reasons why we do this. We certainly will when we're talking about strategy, but we're not going to go into it now because you know otherwise we'll be here all night. Um, but um, the, the the people were standing up and and you stand at the front because you know expect to be insulted, expect to have you know yeah your your, your parentage uh, you know questioned and and, and 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 in the last case I think it was this year uh, Brent Brent and uh, I think it was you could almost say it was a death threat. You know, and it's like, but if, you, if you're going to be a, a developer, you know, and what we would say is this is where if you're going to hold these public committees, don't expect your planning consultant. They'll do it because they're doing it for a fee. You stand up there and you take the abuse because it's it you learn a lot about yourself and and, and it's, it's a great experience in many ways it might be uncomfortable uh, but don't always leverage that out because um there are there are real good reasons when you want to make it personal because it's very very hard for some people however vociferous they might be about anti about your project when they're looking you in the eye the only the real brazen hard ones you know will carry forward so if you stand up in a room of 24 40, 100, or however many people you might have in the room, actually, if you're hiding behind your consultants, then actually it makes it easier for the um, 
the uh, the following of of of, of um, disapproval, if you like, uh, the 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 opposition, it makes it easier thing. But when you're standing up there as a person, you will win some of those over in the room by standing up there. I can promise you, you won't enjoy it necessarily. You can have people out there stand there holding your hands um, to 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 help you. But anyway. So local residents, just unbelievable the amount of disruption that they can cause. Uh, and very rarely are they a benefit. So, you know, um, you know, but, but just going back to, to, to sorry, I went off track a bit, but going back to the, 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 the two public meetings we had on that particular project, I can't remember how many it was afterwards, but I do think we had uh, three, if not four, expressions of interest in, in what we were actually going to be developing from people that are in the room are saying, oh, we're against this, but they're only against it because they they want to be seen amongst their neighbours as against it. But actually, in reality, their potential purchasers or even investors, we, 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 we've had that experience, uh, you know, many years ago, but we have had that experience. Um, so local, local residents, don't, don't, don't ignore them, you know, because... You know, uh, it, it gen generally adds that to the timeline. But again, we'll have some interesting stories as we go through. And 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 and, and on the other side, depending on who those local residents are, um, they may well have brought their third party consultants in. Yeah, um, and this particularly comes up as as, as as maybe it goes to planning committee, and then maybe if you, you get a refusal, it goes to to you know an appeal, um, and it, we, we we might have a we might have a hearing, or you know, uh, or it might be decided by written representation. But they're still going to have their consultants. So this is where it's quite important what consultants you use. So this is where you have to play my consultants better than your game, yours game. Yeah, and it is. It really is, and and that's hard to do because it generally means you're going to pay more than you need to. Um, but actually, to get the right result, you're better off investing in having my consultant, my barrister comes from a better chambers than your barrister does, or 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 our cost consultant comes from one of the best known practices in in the city or in the town or whatever it might be. As against you, have got a perfectly decent person, but actually they're not qualified. They don't have the reputation. So this is where you you pay. You know, this is it. We've got our seven suited consultants sitting on this side of the table. Who have you got? It's all posturing. It's all games. It's all expensive games really so third party consultants you always need to be aware of who you're using if you try and cut costs by choosing perfectly adequate people for the job sometimes so it's about who you employ so going back to what i said in terms of consultants sometimes having somebody local could be a good thing or sometimes it could be the very very worst thing that you can do um so as as we move, as our planning moves through the process, and you know maybe it, it it does get it does get turned down, you know. And again, in the strategy session, we'll be talking to you why we sometimes want it to be turned down. And that's quite. If I can explain it without baffling you, you might find that pretty interesting, you know. Um, and so if if we go to an appeal, for instance, then we're going to come up against the planning inspectorate, and they are absolutely key players. They're key players from our point of view because we always plan we all strategize our planning and we process the planning or the, the, we process the planning process that we process our planning um paperwork etc all to do with the planning inspector everything is focused on the inspector we are nearly always hoping that we don't go to appeal um but we still plan to go to appeal so we they are very much key players they're at the forefront of our thoughts and when we're uh, right at the beginning around the table and we're possibly looking around and talking around the table with our, our own in-house planning team but also external consultants or as it is at the moment virtual consultants um you know we are we are saying right okay this is the right way forward because if we do this we tick a lot of boxes when and if or if and when we come to a an appeal um, then we know that we've got we've increased our chances marginally because we have ticked a lot of boxes yeah so uh, a plan inspector so it's not the individual inspectors it's the it's the position you know so very very much you, you need to be right from in our opinion from day one thinking about those not hoping that you'll get it through on committee or or, or, or delegated powers from the, from a planning officer etc that's great if that happens but don't plan for that to happen because you know it's all part of the you know plan for the worst and you know yeah 
enjoy enjoy the best when it comes because it does come occasionally but more often if you don't plan for the worst that's what ends up happening um so you know we can take that further and other key players potentially most of you hopefully won't get to this but it come it becomes the high court um and and and, and we'll, we'll talk about that but that's generally about when when process is is, is deemed to be you know it, it carried out incorrectly in some form or other whether it's from our side because we think the local authority have processed it improperly or or from if we've got consent it is from the other side if you like could be the local authority could just be the resident we often get a situation or fairly often get a situation where us and the planning authority agree and we're actually joining forces against the residents we have also had it where we don't agree with the planning authority where we're actually recruiting the local residents and the councillors to to lobby on our behalf and and yeah if we ever have time we'll, 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 that, that's a, used to be a bar story but we we, we get have mo most of those things now so that really are key players in the planning process but every one of those is important but the most key player players is you me us it's it's the people that are commissioning the work if you like we are the people that are risking our our funds in order to take and gain planning consent we're key if we're the wrong people we're not going to be able to instruct all the key players on our side of the table to come up with the best case the best proposition and the best chance of gaining the consent that we actually want yeah um and and so it's, it is down to us. So if, if you are lacking in your planning knowledge, your planning expertise and your plan skills, and most people are going to be honest because, you know, it's a pretty much a specialist area. You do need your key people and you've got to have those, real, you know, got to be the right people. Um, and and I'm, I'm sure Bryn's done something on um, risk and money and stuff like that. Um, and this is an area you cannot afford um to cut costs as i said before you don't always get what you pay for yeah so i'm not saying you've always got to spend more money and spending more money gets you the right result because that that's just not true however what we see is a lot of applications that fail and we look at a lot of failed failed applications um not always but very often we could we could get consent for something in and around what they're going for if we actually invested in in the upfront process a bit more by possibly bringing in and, and investing in some surveys and some consultants to support our case yeah um so that's been richard little i've been talking about key players in the planning process and yep there are a few that we haven't had time to mention but they are the key players yeah um so i'm going to be signing off now and going to be catching up with you over the next day or so with the next or the next but one video um all to do with planning so hope you enjoyed that and uh you know anybody's got any questions and they want to sort of you know pose them in if it's on facebook or youtube or wherever it might be you know we're always happy to have a look at them and 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 you might get an answer so take care richard little signing off good night